We do. You got to start, start somewhere. Don't be hating. You got to start somewhere, y'all. Next time, it'll be more. Amen? So how about the mothers, y'all? I said, how about the mothers, y'all? I told my wife today that I was going to preach a regular sermon. I was going to not get too excited. And she started laughing. I said, well, I'm going to try. Amen? But uh, um, mothers are something very, very, very special. Very, very, very special. Got my glasses. I don't need them, really. I don't need them. I don't need them. I don't need them. If you guys keep praying for me, everything that, that the devil tried to do to me won't happen. So you guys pray for me, all right, that I'm completely well. I actually can see better than I used to, believe it or not. All right, so I'm not going to use them today just to show you guys something. And if I miss a couple of things, y'all don't know what my notes say anyway, so y'all don't know. <laughs> Amen? Um, I'm glad that you made it. I'm glad that you're here. Because I believe with my whole heart that God doesn't make mistakes or, or coincidences. But this is what I'm going to tell you honestly. You need not just to come for Mother's Day. You need not just to come for Christmas. You need not just to come for Resurrection or Easter Sunday. You need not just to come for New Year's. You need not to come so people don't chew you out because you have to show up for certain days. What you need to do is establish in your mind that no matter what's going on, I'm going to be consistent in the house of the Lord. Period. That's what you need to do. And, and I'm not telling you that you have to be here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you need to be consistent wherever you're going to go and make it between you and the Lord. Because I tell you, sometimes a lot of times people don't want to do anything with the house of the Lord except that a calamity comes. Something bad happens, right? Something, something comes and waylays them, and then, then they rush to the house. And I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm saying that if you get into the house of the Lord, you'll know and be prepared. The word says when the storms came, right? When the winds blew, that the house could not be knocked down because they were founded upon the rock. That is Jesus Christ. See, we try to live on the roller coaster. When it's high, it's good. And when it's low, we need the Lord. When it's high, I got this. When it's low, Jesus, where are you? I've never, I, 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 I can tell you that so many people tell me, I can't believe that the Lord ha allowed this to happen. Really? And you know what? Everything that happens to people in the world happens to people in the church. Right? But see, the difference is when we have something happen to us, we knew that something could happen and we know who to go to. Amen? The people in the world don't know who to go to because they think something's going on that's not right. Life is life. Amen? That's not my Mother's Day message. But, but I did just want to tell you just to be consistent. Sometimes, you know what? I'm going to tell you guys this. I played against Emmett Smith. You guys know Emmett Smith? All-time leading Russian football player, right? Has an NFL record. You guys know him? I played against Emmett, guys. But at the time, I played against Emmett. Emmett was probably the fourth best back that I played against. This is college. Emmett wasn't the best running back I ever played against. But guess what? Emmett stayed the course. Emmett played year in and year out. Emmett took care of his body, and Emmett stayed the course. So right now, when I say I played against Emmett, you say, man, he was the best back ever. I got other guys that I knew that were better than Emmett. But Emmett got to prove it. Because Emmett stayed the course. If you stay the course, you get to prove the goodness of God. If you stay the course, you get to see the greatness of God. If you stay consistent, God will always show himself strong in your life. Amen? All you have to do is stay consistent. Amen? All right. Amen. Whew, we got three sermons today. Praise God. If you would, please stand with me. We're going to read out the book of Proverbs. Mario, I can see all your expressions, so please act right on the front row. I told Mario to sit, sit up front, guys. He never has before. He's like, I got, I got to be in the booth. I said, no, you don't. 
He said this. Thirty-one. Once you get to say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And everybody that's that's new, first time coming, just want to say welcome to you and make yourselves at home. It doesn't have to be your last time. If you um, want to be here, you can always have a space here. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. Once you get to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. Once you get to say, preach, preacher. Preach, preacher. On Mother's Day, I plan on even doing that with the help of the Lord. Amen? And it reads, who can find a virtuous woman? Is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life that's a good woman she seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands she is like the merchant ships she bring forth her food from afar she rises also while it is yet night and give meat to her household and a portion to her maidens or to her servants she considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands she plants a vineyard she girds her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. She lays her hand to the spindle and her hands to the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she stretched forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he is sitting among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is a law of kindness. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we just want to thank you, want to bless you, want to praise you, Lord. We just want to thank you for the mothers today, Lord. And Father, if you allow me to speak a word, Lord, I'll speak a word about mothers. And Lord, anoint me so that I'm received in what I say. And Father, let it not fall on deaf ears or hardened hearts because there are some people whose hearts need to be mended. There are some relationships that need to be mended. There are some reconciliations that need to be done between mothers and children. And Father, right now, do that work. As I speak, I speak that there will be a healing between mothers and children. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. I'm going to speak on this subject. This is a public praise. Thank you, Mom. You are truly God's gift. This is a public praise. Thank you, Mom. You are truly God's gift. Amen? Amen. Little children say amen. <laughs> I feel the most that the most precious gift that God has given humanity is a gift of a mother. The mother, she stands alone in influence, in patience, in resilience, in strength, and in stature. Mom is the reigning, undisputed, every weight champion. And mom is the original superhero who encourages with a single word who speaks like no other, who protects like no other, who sacrifices like no other. I'm talking about mom, y'all. Who strengthens like no other, who feeds you like no other, who comforts like no other. Mom, this is a shout out to you. Church, let's give all the moms a hand. And if we take our time, which I won't take too much time today, 
But if we could all take our time and just reflect on what our moms mean to us. See, I, 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 me and my brother and my sisters, we lost our mom. My mom has passed uh, almost 11 years now. You know, but, but we've not forgotten our mother. Amen? So when I was going over the sermon, when I went back and looked over it, I was like, man, this is still a sermon to my mom. Amen? So I, I might, you know, and I don't know how my brother feels, but at times I just cry out of nowhere because I miss her. You know, at times I get kind of sad, you know, because I miss her. But I, 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 I can tell you this much, I live, and I stand today because of who she was in my life. So although I miss her, I'm still standing because I have the opportunity to have a mother. Amen? So all of us who have lost our mothers, this one's for you too. For those of you who might, might be sitting right next to your mother, this is for you. For those of you who mom might be in the next city over, this is for you. For those of you who have in the rifts with your mom, I'm going to tell you, you better get it right. Y'all hear me? Those of you who don't get along with your mom and say you got to just cause, I'm telling you, you're wrong as wrong could be. Because the word says like this, honor your mother and father that it might be long on this earth that the days the Lord gives to you. He didn't say your mom had to honor you. He didn't say your mom got to respect you. The word didn't say your mom got to, got to be, be respectful and honorable to you. This is what the word says. If you want to live long, you better quit talking crazy about your mama. You better quit mistreating your mom. You better quit having them sideways thoughts about your mom. You better honor your mom, because that's what the word says. <laughs> honor your mother. And we as, we, we as people want to give contingencies. I'll honor my mom if she treats me like this. <sighs> Show me that anywhere in the word. That's not what the word says, y'all. All right, I'm glad it's silent. I'm glad it's quiet, but that's your opportunity to get it right. I can tell you this, and this, this between me and my brother, I don't have to cry about how I did not honor my mother. I do not have one sleepless night because I did not honor my mom. Anybody that knew me and my mom's relationship, and me and my brothers and my mom's relationship, and all, the, all, all of us kids with our mom, we don't cry because we didn't honor our mom. We all honored our mom. I think it was because... We didn't have a choice. Yeah, we didn't have a choice. <laughs> it might have something to do with it. It might have something to do with it. Mom wasn't having it. Mom was not having it. Have you ever had somebody make you afraid even though they're not even in the world? <laughs> That's the power of our mother. <laughs> Amen? But to God be the glory. So whenever you think about me, I can just speak for me. Don't cry for me that I lost my mom. Rejoice with me that God has my mom. Amen? Because we know she's in heaven. So this is a public phrase that I want to say, thank you, mom. Amen? And I have about 12 different points, but they will not take very long. Thank you, mom, number one, for giving me life. Amen? We talked about this before, right? That, that your mom, you know, she gets pregnant. And, and, and some things happen as I call the hostile takeover. <laughs> you know what I mean? At first it's kind of cute, right? There's a little, there's not even a bump. There's nothing there. Then all of a sudden there's a little, a little cute baby bump, right? See the bump, then all of a sudden, you know, the bump becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then your mom, no, well, okay. I'm just saying the bump. I'm talking about the baby. See what happened, Mario, when you let a lead service? That's why I need you here. You need to be my straight man. Don't mind me, y'all. The hustle takeover, right? The baby starts developing, right? And, and then mom's changes, right? Mom body changes. Mom appetite changes. Mom demeanor changes. Attitude changes. Their little tolerance level changes. When they used to laugh at things, they want to throw something at you, kind of changes. Right? It, it changes when the hostile takeover comes in because that baby literally takes everything that the baby needs from the mom. 
The mom gets malnutritious, but the baby is well nourished. Mother actually, while she's giving the baby life, she's actually taking or losing her life. She's actually exchanging everything from herself to the baby. And she does it generally with a smile. Moms go through that where the baby kicks, where they have to sleep in certain positions, where they have to sleep sitting up, where they sleep, right? They have to endure these things while they're letting. Thank you, mom, for giving me life. That's what we own, right? Mother's life is given away for the baby's life. While the baby is growing in the womb, the mother's losing nutrients and nutrition. But she's doing it with a smile of expectation, of the hope of the child beyond what she might be enduring. Thank you, mom, for giving us life. And they say that childbirth is the closest moment that a woman comes to death. Is death and life right there. Not just the pain, but literally how much she's going through. Her heart is almost given up. The baby's not breathing. All these things that happen. Science says she's closer to death at that time than any other time in her life. Thank you, mom, for giving us life. Amen? And while mom goes through this to give us life, we come into this world and we start taking from her life. <laughs> Amen? She's constantly having to fulfill our needs. She's constantly having to worry about our needs. She's constantly sacrificing herself for what we need and what we want. She gives of her life all the days of her life while she's still not just in here, but while we're growing and grown up giving us life. Thank you, Ma, for giving us life. She sacrifices so that we can go to college. She drives a bucket, y'all. That means a terrible car. So that we can have a nice one. She puts money in our bank accounts that really are in our bank accounts because we never put anything in them. They're the bank accounts that she gave to us, opened it up with her own money. Thank you, Mom, for giving us life. Amen? Amen? Number two, thank you, Mom, for your prayers. There's nobody's prayers like a mother's prayers. There's nobody. When you, when you, when you, when you get down to it, you say, Mom, pray for me. Right? When you mess, when you, I remember I was messing up. I was messing up. Fred, don't laugh so loud. I was messing up, right? And I told my mom, Mom, I'm messing up. I'm getting this whole thing wrong. I can't get it right. She said, son, don't run from God. She said, run to God. She said, I'll be praying for you, but you run to God because that's where your answers are. See, when, when, when you think about it, your mom prays for you when other people talk about you. Come on. Come on. Your mom gets on your knees for you when people stab you in your back. Your mom goes before the Almighty and says, my son, my daughter is going through a rough time. That's not the promise that you gave me. And she petitions the throne like nobody else can. When all your friends turn their backs on you and all the enemies are rising up against you, you can rest assured that your mom is laid out. She's praying for you. She's not moving and she's trusting God to move heaven and earth till things change. Thank you, mom, for your prayers because you wouldn't be in this church if your mama didn't pray. Amen? Amen. Next point. Thank you, mom, for believing in me. You, you, you know how important it is for somebody to believe in you. Amen? Have you ever just been in a place where you say, if somebody would just believe in me, I know I could do something else. If somebody just believed in me, I know I could get off them drugs. Come on, y'all, help me out. If somebody believed in me, I can overcome this stage of my life. If somebody just believes in me, I can overcome this, and this thing can be a victory. Nobody believes in you like your mom. 
Nobody, because I think that when, when, when God had his hand in, on her, on you, in your mother's womb, he was promising your mom something in her spirit. I believe that with all my heart. So then when other people are willing to give up on you, your mom's willing to get down on her knees for you. When other people backbite you, your mom's still believing in you. When you're at the worst place, even to you, whether you, the point where you bring your mom embarrassment or shame, she said, that's my son. That's my daughter, and that's not what their future is. I'm going to stand believing in God for what he whispered in my spirit when that person was in my womb. Thank you, mother, for believing in me. Because when everybody else gives up on you, and when everybody else gave up on you, I know that your mama did it. Amen? Amen. Next one. Thank you, Mom, for your discipline and correction. Kind of funny, me and my wife are talking this morning. I got a lot of whoopings when I was a kid. She asked me, she said, T, did you ever get whooped with a, with a hanger? I said, no. She, no, I'm just telling the truth. I mean, it's a good story. They, they, hey, they're going to like it. So when I finish, y'all, y'all got to clap like y'all like it, okay? She said, did you ever get whooped with a hanger? I said, No. I never did, because mom never whooped me with a hanger. I never got whooped in an extension cord or nothing like that. Now switch, but that was natural. <laughs> mom did organic whoopings. <laughs> That's organic. That's organic. Amen. That's organic. I said, maybe she would hit me with a house shoe or something like that, but she never abused me. And then when I told her, I said, my mom whooped me because I needed to be spanked. For real, I, I knew it. I, knew, I, said, mom, I said, mom whooped me so the world couldn't whoop me later. Amen. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. My mom corrected me so that I didn't go to prison. Oh, come on, help me out, y'all. My mom corrected me so that I didn't go into gangs. Oh, ho, ho. mom corrected me that I wasn't slanging dope on the corner because I knew she wasn't going to let me do it. Mom corrected me that I didn't mess up my future. She didn't let me go too far. Discipline and correction. I thank my mom that she disciplined me because she saw me going the wrong way and she loved me too much to let me go too far. When you in this room let your children go too far, think about what you setting them up for. You need to stand up to your children and discipline them and correct them. Correct them and discipline them so the world doesn't. And get your feelings out the equation. That's where we go wrong. You play with your feelings, you let other people play with them too. I shouldn't talk like that to my kid. If you don't, somebody gonna say something else crazier to your kid. And something worse than what you gonna do for your kid. It's what you do for your kid. It's not what you do to your kid. Discipline is for your kid. If you discipline your kid, you're for your kid. You're on your kid's side. If you don't discipline them, something's gonna happen to your kid. You gotta understand that. When your child grows up and you train them right and they can stand up on their own and they can say, thank you, mom, for what you instilled in me, that's when you look them out and say, you've arrived. Until that moment that they can't change their own diapers when they're 15, 20 years old, you don't look them eye to eye and allow a child to be in the place of an adult. When you let a child be in the place of an adult, you just gave them the keys to their destruction. So thank you, mama, for disciplining me. And it was organic. <laughs> Amen. See, I told you, baby, it's going to like it. Next one. Thank you, mom, for your ear. Come on, y'all. Y'all know you'll be, people can say some crazy stuff, and your mom listen to you. Right? Your friends be like, man, go on with that, man. Nobody want, don't nobody got time for that, right? For real. People be saying, man, you crazy. Something wrong with you. And then your mama sit there and, and make it seem like you, you, like you Einstein, like you brilliant. <laughs> huh, for real, have you ever just thought how your mom just listens to you, right? You could come and say, I'm going to be an astronaut, your mama would be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mom, one day I'm going to go to the moon. Like, yeah, son. Your mom has an ear like no other. 
And really, when you really want to bounce something crazy off the world, who do you tell? You tell your mom because you know you're safe. You know your mom might say, once you leave, <laughs> but she's not going to go tell on you. She ain't going to want to say, boy, I got to tell you something. My son is crazy. She ain't going to do that to you. When you go to your mom, it's safe. I'm telling you all the truth. Thank you, mom, for the ear. Because a lot of the things that I was able to accomplish in my life yes. were just that my mom heard me. I was a dreamer, y'all. Uh, probably a crazy dreamer. Now, mom might, mom might say something different now that we're older. But mom, listen to me. Mom let me think and believe that I could do anything because I knew if I shared it with her. I left out of there. She wasn't looking cross-eyed. I'm like, man, mom, mom thinks I, could, I got this. Might be a different story now, but mom has an ear like no other. Thank you, mom, for your ear. Next one. Thank you, mom, for your advice. <laughs> you cannot get better advice than from your mother. Dads, I ain't beating up on y'all, but we just got a different switch. I try my best, but, you know, I'm a man. You cannot get better advice than you can from a mother. You know if you want to do something in life and you really want to hear the truth about if you can or if you can't, if you should or if you shouldn't, if you got what it takes, don't just talk to your mom. Say, Mom, what do you think? Let your mom give you some advice. Your mom will tell you if you're you dating the right girl. She'll tell you like this, that girl too good for you. You need to leave her alone. Oh, she will? She'll tell you, why you want to mess with her, mess up her life? Just because your life messed up? Don't bring her into your mess. Mom will tell you, I'm telling, I'm telling you all the truth. You know your mom will tell you like that. Mama say she decent, and you jacked up. Leave her alone. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Help me out. I'm preaching good. Mama give you the right advice. You bring all that. You bring that man, bring that woman in front of your mom. She won't say nothing. Sometimes she might say, might give you one of them looks, right? <laughs> give you, one of, you know, one of mama looks. And be like, oh, shoot, I ain't even going to ask her what she's thinking. I don't want to hear what the truth is, right? See, when your mom gives you advice, she gives you true advice. Your mom gives you advice from a pure place. Your mom gives you advice that's better than advice that you could give to yourself because your mama sees what you don't see. Your mama knows what you don't know, and your mama can explain what you're trying not to deal with. Your mom could speak truth to you in 13 seconds flat. <laughs> Amen? Thank you, Mom. Next one, for never giving up on me. Thank you, Mom, for never giving up on me. How many of us found ourselves in pits and ditches before? Pits and ditches. I'm raising my hand, y'all, because that was me. And you know my mom knew it and still didn't give up on me. You know, my mom never looked me and I said, you are no longer my son because you've gone too far. She never said, that's it, I'm done, you're through. Mom never gave up on me. And we stand here because our mothers never gave up on us. But let me tell you something. When you was going through that crazy stage of life, remember that? And your mama didn't give up on you, right? How come you calling your children the devil right now? Because they're doing what you did to your mom. Help me out, y'all. Wow. We got to understand that we used to be teenagers and preteens and going through teens and 20s, thought we knew it, and our moms never gave up on us. So we need not to give up on our children. You know how people make it to the next generation? It's usually because somebody just like mom will not give up on them. Amen? Okay. Thank you, Mom, for being honest with me. You know how we go seek advice from all kind of people that we want to know that what they're going to tell us, right? You know, if we're messing up, we want to do something wrong, we go 
That's one of the homies. Hey, should we do this? Yeah, man, you should do that. And we know it's wrong, right? But that's why we went to him. Right? We went to him so we get a, so we get a homie connection. Right? We go into the home work to get the homie hookup on advice. Hey, homeboy, you think I should mess up with this, this, and this? Oh, that ain't even messing up. But yeah, do it. No one is messed up. Because next week he's going to ask you, should he do the same thing? And you know what you got to do? Hey, homie, you told me to. Yeah, you could do it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Right? We go to certain places sometimes and get certain advice. Because that's what we want to hear. Y'all heard me? But thank you, Mom, for being honest with us. Mama, tell us, no. That's going to lead you to destruction. No, if you keep on doing like that, you're going into a pit. And then Mama tell you something like this. You're going to get yourself somewhere that Mama can't rescue you from. Because a lot of times, Mama thinks they can fix it. Right? Mama going to fix this. Mess around, you get yourself too far gone. Mama can't fix that. But if you'd have heard mama before you got up into that mess, it'd have been nothing to fix because it'd have been all right. Thank you, mama, for being honest. I got a few more. Thank you, mom, for seeing the best in me. Thank you, mom, for seeing the best in me. You know, it's almost like everybody in life actually goes through some things, some trials, some things that actually challenge their metal and their makeup. You, you know, some things that, that we either encounter or things that we actually do, some addictions or things too, you know, they, they actually challenge our lives. But when we're going through those bad times, our mom still speaks to the good. When we go through the messed up situations and things that we even impose upon ourselves, mom speaks to the best in us. See, mom never wavers off of seeing the best in you. I, got, I know people that, 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 that have had their children on drugs for 20 and 30 years, and their mama is the only one that still hasn't given up on them. Their mom is still saying when they get well, it's going to get all right. When, when, they, when they get off these drugs, everything's going to be okay. Their mom keeps seeing the very best in that child. And you know what that does to a child? You know what that does to a man? You know what that does to a woman that might even be down and out? That gives them life. That gives them something to grab hold to and to live on. So throughout your bad situations, throughout your bad times, throughout the bad things in life, mom sees the best in you. Thank you, mom, for seeing the best in me. Amen? Next one. Thank you, mom, for your unwavering love. Now, didn't you know that no matter what, your mama loved you? <laughs> right? You knew that she loved you. Through all things, mom's love never wavered. I'm not talking about her emotions. I'm not talking about her disappointments. I'm not talking about her being upset with the bad decisions we made. I'm talking about her knowing, us knowing that rock solid, that she still loves me. That I haven't gone too far. I haven't done too much. I haven't been too bad. I haven't disappointed her so much. She still loves me. Mom's love is unwavering. It's like that blinking contest, that staring contest. It never blinks. It don't give up. It don't quit. It's always there. Thank you, Mom, for your unwavering, unshakable, unrelenting love. Amen? I got two more left. Thank you, Mom, for expecting me to get it right. Yeah, your mom loved you, but she sure expected you to get it right. Hello? I think some of y'all in this room still messing up. Because y'all thinking I, did, I still ain't got it right. But you know your mom, if she's 70, 80, 90 years old, she's still expecting you to get it right. Amen? You know what your mom's expectation of you getting it right is? That's you having some hope to get it right. Get and leave, live off of that. Your mom expects you to get it right. It's called a real expectation. 
your mom expects you to get it right. And throughout life, when we're getting it wrong, we still have the voice of our mother that's expecting us to get it right. If my, since my mom is gone, I still know what my mom imparted in me. And my mom still expects me to get it right. If your mom is alive or if your mom is not here, you still know, and I still know, that your mom's expectation of us getting it right still resonate with us. Your mom always has and always will expect you, not her, you to get it right. Thank you, mom, for expecting me to get it right. Amen? <laughs> it's Mother's Day. She, she can't be wrong today, y'all. Amen? The last one I want to say is thank you, mom, for showing me Jesus. The sum total of life is, are you saved? That's it. It's not this temporary thing. It's, are you saved? It's not these 50, 60, 70, 80 years. It's, it's Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. It's mom's expecting you to get it right. And the best way she wants you to get it right is to be saved. See, my mom is, is not going to come back. But I sure can go to where she is. Amen? And our mom had more courage than all of us because she went through something that we didn't go through. And then she crossed into some place where we are not. But my mom's confession was, if I'm healed, I'm all right. And she said, if I'm not healed, I'm all right. She said, if I stay or if I go, I'm all right. She showed me her faith to the moment that she went away. She didn't give up. She didn't say, I'm worried about this. She didn't say, I don't think I got it right. She said, I got it right. If I'm healed here or if I'm not healed here, I'm trusting in him. See, so mom didn't just show me Jesus in a book. She didn't just show me in the word. She showed me in her life. If you and I would pay attention to a godly mother, she's showing us Jesus. She's showing us Jesus by giving us life because he gave us life. Amen? She's showing us Jesus. Amen? By, 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 by praying for us because the word says he's our intercessor. Amen? She's showing us Jesus by believing in us. Because he believed in us so much that he died for us. She's showing us Jesus by him disciplining and chastening us. Said so the Lord loves whom he chases and corrects. She's showing us Jesus because he listens to us like nobody else. He's got an ear for our prayers and an ear for our dreams. She's showing us Jesus because if we really listen to him and commune with him and inquire for him, he'll give us the best advice ever. She's showing us Jesus because Jesus will never give up on you. She's showing us Jesus because Jesus will always be honest with us. She's showing Jesus because Jesus is seeing the best in us. She's showing us Jesus because Jesus' love is unwavering. She's showing us Jesus because Jesus expects us to get it right. See, if we look at mom good enough, if we look at mom hard enough, if we study mom deep enough, mom is showing us Jesus. Thank you, mom, for showing me Jesus. 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 So mom, those sleepless, night, sleepless nights, those difficult days, your selfless acts, your unparalleled love, and the endurance that carries each of us in life 
has put you in a special place reserved for only legends and heroes. And what you've given us has been the necessary ingredients at the right time that has helped us and encouraged us to live life. Mom, this is a so-deserved public and long overdue praise. Thank you, Mom. You are truly, unequivocally, without parallel and without rival, you are truly God's gift. Thank you, Mom. Let's stand up and give the moms a hand. Let's stand up and give the mothers a hand. Let's give the mothers a hand. Let's give them a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord for our moms. God is good. And I was pretty calm today. that God's going to heal some rifts and some, some broken relationships between mothers and children. I meant that. Now this could go for several levels. See, some of us don't have our mothers here. And let's just suppose that you weren't in good standing with your mom. Then what you carry and what you've been carrying is that I wasn't in good standing with my mom. And you cannot fix that by saying I wasn't in good standing with my mom. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That means that you can reconcile even with your parent who's passed away. You really can because God wants you to be able to live freely in life. You don't have to carry that I wasn't right with my mom until the day that you pass away. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God came that you may have life and that more abundant. He'll restore that. If you can be honest enough to say I wasn't right with my mom, maybe I was living wrong when my mom left this earth. Maybe I wasn't saved when mom left. God can reach back there because he's the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same forever. He can reach back to your yesterday and he can fix that. He can fix that broken stuff between you and your mom. He really can. And you can live a fulfilled life knowing that God has that. And some of us today have mothers that we don't treat right. I'm not saying as a reaction. I'm not saying what your mom did or didn't do. I'm saying that you're supposed to honor your mom. Period. Some of us have to just grow up. And some of us need to give our mothers a break. Because our mothers probably did the very best that they could with what they had. Have you ever asked your mom what she went through? Have you asked, ever asked her, really, how come she can't love the way you want her to love? Maybe nobody showed her. Maybe nobody loved her. Maybe nobody opened her arms or their hearts. And your mom is doing the greatest job. Matter of fact, she's doing a miracle job just by working it out like she is. We don't give people the, 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 the leeway that we give ourselves. Maybe your mom is doing the very best that she can. Maybe she's doing the very best that she can. But that doesn't give you an excuse not to treat her right. And some of you don't talk to your mom. And you think it's okay. 
you, you, you're not part of her life and she's alive. You live in maybe two blocks away from her and you never go see her. You never visit her. You just stay away from her. And you think it's okay, but I came to tell you today emphatically it is not okay. It's not all right. See, as a Christian, you have the mantle to live like Christ. It doesn't mean if you feel like it, if it's in your favor, if things are going your way, it means period. I'm going to live like Christ. You don't live off reflexes and reactions. You live going forward as Christ would go forward. So if you want things healed between you and your mom, in the past, in the present, and in the future, you came to the right church at the right moment. Because I know God does miracles. I know he does. He'll move heaven and earth to make a miracle happen for you. So right now, right now, if you're bold enough, if you want to get it right enough, if you have faith enough, it don't matter what anybody else said. It don't matter what anybody's thinking. It don't matter what anybody knows. You know and God knows. You need to come down to this altar and you need to get it right. Come on. Altar's open. Altar's open. Altar's open.